In my first video, I talked about why I think it's possible to build a 1U CubeSat for a material cost of less than $1,000. That is, $1,000 without a payload. This video is a deeper dive into what I am budgeting for each subsystem. Those subsystems are the flight computer, sensors, radio for any sort of communications, electrical power subsystem, so that's solar power, batteries, and the like, attitude control system, and structure. And before I go into any detail about budgets, let's talk about the trade space. I was able to find roughly four big trade-offs. So starting from the top, low power versus performance. This is a pretty obvious trade-off between any uh, computational system. Ease of manufacturing against small parts. Of course, this CubeSat is designed to be small, but it is much easier to manufacture larger parts. Ease of design versus redundancy and extensibility. The simpler the design, the easier it is to design and build and make, while you want to have more redundancy, you want to be able to add on to this later, that's the extensibility. And most importantly for the design constraint I'm working in, cheap and then easy to procure. That lines up right against radiation tolerance and having parts that have a large temperature range. If you want either of these, usually the price goes up, especially with the radiation tolerance. So without further ado, let's get into the subsystems and uh, how much I've budgeted per subsystem. So let's start with the first subsystem, the flight computer. I'm targeting an STM32 L4, L4X6 product line of microcontroller, roughly $20 a piece, excellent uh, low power performance. You can run them around a couple milliwatts. You can get them in wide temperature ranges. They come with lots of I.O. You can run them either as a real-time operating system or you can do bare metal. As non-volatile memory, I think I'll use some MRAM, probably a um, spy-based one, and the largest that I can find is a 512 kilobyte chip, roughly $30. The advantage of MRAM is that it is RAD tolerant, and otherwise I'm just budgeting an additional $40 of just miscellaneous stuff that I will likely end up needing. And it has to all fit somewhere, probably $30 for the PCB, where it's a four-layer, nine-by-nine centimeter board. One to 20 for this subsystem. So let's talk about sensors. First thing I have on my list is a gyroscope, and I found this A3G gyroscope. It's automotive rated, costs $16, and has a measurement range of 250 degrees a second. It might be necessary to have an additional gyroscope, uh, one that has a higher range than 250 degrees a second, but this is a good starting point. Found this magnetometer, this MMC59, for about $4, and I might end up needing to find a more accurate magnetometer, but again, another good starting point. For an accelerometer, ADXL355 for $55. It comes in a, in a ceramic package. It's perfect for space. Has a high temperature range, a SPI, and an I2C interface. However, at $55, it's, I might not end up using this. Um, it's also an accelerometer, which isn't critical to this CubeSat. For temperature sensors, I'll probably just end up using NTC, NTC thermistors. Um, the advantage of this is that all I need are ADCs to be able to read in the thermistor output. I don't need to rely on another data bus. They are very cheap, um, but I'll probably end up using many of these, so it'll, it'll end up being roughly around $30 total. Now, sun sensors. I found a TSL-1401, which is a, is a 128 by one diode array. With the appropriate physical mounting, this will end up working as a directional sun sensor. I figure that I'll need six of these sun sensors, and I'm just rounding up to $100. And in total, everything else comes out to $200. Let's talk about the radios. So for my mode of communication, I am picking the Iridium, the 9603 modem. I've decided to not use VHF and UHF. Uh, radios require ground stations, and that's, not, and that's something that I don't want to get into at this point. Global Star is just too expensive. Uh, it's another constellation that I could end up using, roughly $250. And what I'm relying on is that TJSAT, which is launching as a part of the NASA-funded ILANA program, um, they are using they are using Iridium to, to demonstrate communications. And assuming it works for them, it should be able to work for me. 
GPS. There is a there is a chip, the Venus 838, $200. The only issue with this one is acquiring it might be too difficult. I might not be able to acquire it as an amateur. I might need to be either working for a university or for a company. And I found an antenna that should work for both Iridium and GPS frequencies. Luckily, Iridium and GPS are, are pretty close to each other in terms of frequency. And then I figure there will be other RF stuff, and I'm just going to throw in $50 to that brings our total to $520. And let's talk about the, the EPS subsystem. I'll probably use some 18650 with the Amion cells. That sell from roughly $6 a piece. And if I use four of them, $25. For the solar cells, I'm just penciling in $100. And this is, I'm leaving this pretty vague because I know I'm not going to be able to use the high-end solar cells and I haven't found a good cheap brand of solar cells yet. Essentially, these are just the not expensive ones. As a part of the electrical power system, I'll have a power management IC, which essentially is just a microcontroller that will be monitoring power consumption and usage for all of the different power rails within the EPS system. Another STM32L4 based microcontroller, along with some non volatile MRAM, roughly $20 here, $15 here. Charging and power monitoring, I'm just going to pencil in $50. I don't have specific chips in mind yet, but they, I don't expect them to be terribly expensive. And in total, this comes out to $200. 10. Moving on to the last two subsystems, attitude control system. Essentially this just consists of the components that will be controlled by the flight computer. This ends up being H-bridges, coils as well. This is for magnetic torque control and H-bridges really are not very expensive. They're just a, essentially just a couple of, of transistors and low power ones at that for my application, this is roughly $25 worth of parts. And for coils, these are probably going to be special handmade ones that I end up making with magnet wire, something around $30 there. These are pretty much just guesses. This comes out to $55. This is where my knowledge falls short. I am just going to pencil in $150. I need more information here. What's in my favor is that a 1U cube set is very small, but any sort of specialty machining can quickly become expensive, so I need to find a way of doing this as cheaply as possible while still being sturdy and flight worthy. In review, which is clearly more than $1,000. So what can we do to actually make this fit under budget? For one thing, sensors, I can probably cut out that accelerometer I was planning on using. For radio, there really isn't much I can cut out. There's some wiggle room with the extra RF components that I would need, though I really don't know at this point what's necessary, so I'll, I have to keep that. The EPS system, there's solar panels for $100. Let's just cut out, remove half the price of the solar panels. The attitude control system, again, there's it's some squishiness, but I don't expect the attitude control system to be any less than $50, $60. For the structure, this is very squishy. I don't know if I can really move this number around. If anything, it might go up due to just manufacturing costs or material costs that I'm just not aware of at this point. I might need to use a cheaper MRAM for the flight computer. The MRAM was 30, so let's use 15. But after taking this into consideration, I'm still ending up still over $100 over budget at $1,135. So there's still some things I need to work on and figure out ways of reducing prices even further. One of the easiest ways to take care of this is to remove the GPS altogether, which would be removing $200 from the budget. Though, I want to have GPS, I want to have that functionality, so I don't want to remove it, but I might need to if I need to get under $1,000. Now while I've talked about the budget, let's talk about what this will actually look like. So, this piece of paper here is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. This is as big as the CubeSat is going to be. So I feel like there will be two boards, and this is following the, the PCC144 standard size, where it's roughly 9 centimeters by 9.6 centimeters. And I figured that there will be a EPS PCB and a main flight board stacked on top of it. The EPS board will have at least two to maybe four 
18650 batteries. The placement of this becomes a little bit tight, so it, I may not end up going with four, along with at least one STM32 um, microcontroller, and it has some associated parts with it. But anywhere from two to four would fit. And on the main flight board, we have everything else essentially. We have another STM32 microcontroller. We have our Iridium modem. The patch and 10 hours show here, but it wouldn't end up going on this flight board. And then our little GPS is just 10 by 10 millimeters. The STM32 parts are 2 by 2 centimeters. The Iridium modem is 32 by 32 millimeters. And then everything else would fit in this flight board. So there's certainly space, at least as of right now, for everything else. None of the sensors are particularly big. Uh, the Iridium and the antenna are certainly the biggest parts um, that I have to worry about. The attitude control system uh, essentially is just some MOSFETs that fit on this flight board. While the coils would sit off board, sun sensors would sit on the outside. But yeah, there's certainly room to work with here and if needed there could even be a third PCB stack but the idea is to leave as much room open for any potential payload. Let me know what you guys think. Is this a reasonable budget to work by? Uh, is there some place where I can cut out expense where I don't need to spend it? Is this structure for $150 totally unreasonable? I don't know. Tell me. Let me know.